we can do even more examples of um, exponents. So we can take a look at what happens when we have, um, let's say, a fraction. Let's say a over b, all that to some power. Let's say n. That's the same thing as saying a to the power of n over b to the power of n. So in other words, you're allowed to sort of split them like this. So before, when we were multiplying things, that we could sort of, you know, write them out like this. We can do the same sort of thing with dividing them as well. We can split them that way. In this case right here, then we'll say example. Maybe I have, I don't know, two fifths to the power of two, let's say. Well, that's the same thing as saying two to the power of two over five to the power of two using this rule. So that means then, well, two to the power of two, that's four, and five to the power of two, that's five times five is 25. Then of course, I'd have to reduce my fraction if I can't, if I can, sorry, uh, but 25 doesn't divide by four or two or anything, so nope. This is it. We're done. We have another rule. What if we have a to the power of zero? This is a key thing. This is a really cool one. It's always equal to one. Anything to the power of zero is equal to one. That's it. So we can have some crazy looking example. We can say, I don't know, let's say two times pi times four over seven times, uh, let's say, 5, no, 50,000, 148, let's say, and all of that then we raise to the power of 0. Well, that's easy then. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. That's it. That's how it works. So that's a really nice rule, I think. Now we have another one. Um, this one right here is going to be a little bit uh, longer, I think, just because there's a lot of different examples. And I think this is really, really important. Is the nth root of a. So this right here is what we call this. This right here we call this the nth root of a. Now you're used to seeing everything, I bet, as a square root. You're used to seeing like square root of 4, or the, you know, the square root of 16, or the square root of 2, which works out really ugly. You're used to seeing square roots, but actually that's because there's a little sort of stealth 2 here. It's always like a little missing 2. But it comes up so often in math that people have gotten lazy and just didn't bother writing the 2. But you'll see now that we don't have to have a just a square root. We can have nth root. We can have lots of different roots. So this is the nth root of a. And the way we write that is this. We can say that that is the same thing as saying it's a to the power of 1 over n. So this is a really important one, and it causes a lot of students big time problems. Here. So I'm just going to write it like this. This is really, this one is really important. Okay, this is worth sort of you thinking about. So for example, let's say I wanted to do, we'll start off nice and easy. What if I have square root of 2? Well, it's like there's a little sort of stealth 2 here sitting here. So if it's not otherwise told, it's like there's a little 2. And the rule says if it's the nth root of a, then you always do a to the power of 1 over n. So in this case right here, we can say that square root of 2 is the same thing as saying 2 to the power of 1 over 2. That's the same thing. We can do it on a calculator, too. If I want to do this right here, I can say, all right, the square root of 2 is this number, 1.414, blah, 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 blah. And that should be the same thing as saying 2 to the power of 1 half. So let's try it. 2 to the power of... I'll put it in a bracket here, 1 over 2, or I could have said 0.5. It's the same thing. So this is like a little stealth 2 here that's sort of there. So if it's not otherwise written, it's called a square root because it's this. But we don't just have to have square roots. We have lots of other weird kinds of roots. So for example, we can say this. This is something we can write. What this just means, this is called the cube root of 8. In this case, that's the same thing as saying 8 to the power of 1 third. What this really says is, um, yeah, is there a value that when you multiply it by itself three times, you get 8. It turns out there is a number. It turns out the cube root of 8 is actually 2. But let's just do it on our calculator again. So on my calculator, I think I can actually do cube roots like this too. If I press math, I can go down here and do the cube root of something. But notice it does the xth root as well. But I can say the cube root of 8. Enter. It gives me 2. But that's also the same thing as saying 8 to the power of 1, whoops, 
1 over 3. It should also give me 2, which it does. So this is, this maybe looks ugly, but this is pretty easy to deal with. And in fact, I could not recommend this enough. Using these rules and knowing how to do this is really, really important, especially later when you get to calculus and you're trying to make things more sort of calculus friendly. So for example, let's say I take the cube root, uh, sorry, the square root of x cubed here. Let me just pretty it up a little bit. It looks ugly. Hold on. So x cubed. So I want the square root of x cubed. Now that may look really gross, and that's because, well, there's a little sort of stealth 2 going on here. This is like a little 2 here. So that's the same thing as saying, well, I take this x cubed, whatever's in the middle, and I take that to the power of, remember what a square root does. That's a 1 over 2. right? And then if you look at that, I can use my rules of exponents. So x cubed to the power of 1 half if I go back and use my rules here, a power to a power is the same thing as multiplying the two. So over here then, I'm gonna say this is x to the power of, well, three times one half. And three times one half is the same thing as saying three over one times one over two. And the rule for multiplying fractions, you just multiply the top times the top, divided by the bottom times the bottom, so it's just three over two. Or when you get used to it, you just remember the three goes on the top and the bottom, there's nothing exciting happens, so it just stays. So it's three to the power of two, or three over two, sorry. This is your sort of power here. So the square root of x cubed is x to the power of three halves. These, I suppose, these are the answers to these ones here. This one right here is really important, knowing how to deal with this. Because when you're working with calculus, you're going to want to take what's called a derivative of something like this, and it may look horrible, and you won't know what to do. But it turns out in calculus, there's some tricks to doing derivatives and finding how slopes of graphs change with uh, x. It turns out this is the trick to doing it, is write it like this. This is more calculus friendly, because then you have a trick that really is handy if you have it in this form. In this form, it's really ugly, and you don't know what to do necessarily. And a very last trick, is if we have negative exponents. That's another really important one. So we're going to say negative exponent. So what happens then? Well, we have something like this. a to the power of, let's say, negative n. That's the same thing as saying 1 over a to the n. This rule right here, also really important. I would say that one right there, really learn it. Okay, this one here, really good to learn. Like I said, so is this one. These are the ones that are tricky, that a lot of students struggle with, but they're really important. So how do we use this one? Well, this tells us that if we have a negative exponent, the same thing as going 1 over, and look at this. It was a to the power of negative n, now it's a to the power of positive n. So it's like this thing right here, you basically forget about the negative here and take this and just push it down at the bottom in the denominator. So we can do an example. x to the power of negative 3, well, that's the same thing as saying, well, what do we say? It means it pushes it down, so it's 1 over, and it's x to the power of positive 3 instead of a negative. So that's how we deal with that. Again, that comes in really handy when you're working with calculus, actually going from this form back to that form. We can do another example. Maybe that'll help. Let's do 2 to the power of negative 2. Well, that's the same thing as saying, let's see, what do we do? Well, it means you push it down to the bottom, so 1 over, and it becomes 2 to the power of positive 2. In that case, it's going to be 1 over, and 2 to the 2 is 4. Great. And maybe one last little example here. What if I have 3 times x to the power of negative 5, let's just say. How do we deal with this with a number in front? You have to keep in mind what's got the negative exponent here. So it's the x to the power of negative 5. That's the thing that's going to get pushed to the bottom. This 3 is actually on the top. So we're going to leave the 3 up here, and we're going to push the x to the power of negative 5 is going to get pushed downstairs. So it's x to the power of positive 5. But this 3 here is still hanging out here. So just to show you that if you have a number in front, that just hangs out on the top still. It's only the thing that had the negative exponent. That gets pushed down and becomes a positive exponent.